Hey besties, have you ever wondered about that soap opera happening inside your bloodstream? ABGs are all the rage in maintaining homeostasis inside of your body. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. Let's get started. The arterial blood gas, or ABG for short, is the ultimate gossip sesh about your blood. It spills all the tea when it comes to acid-based drama and gas pressure levels happening inside your arterial blood. Think of it as your body's way of saying, here's my report card, no sugar coating. Now let's talk about our four key players, pH, bicarbonate, carbon dioxide, and oxygen. So first up, we got our pH drama queen, and she is the ruler of the pH blood kingdom. It's all about hydrogen ions, which are these tiny little rebels found inside our blood. Hydrogen and pH have a kind of inverse relationship. The more of these rebels you have, the lower the pH drops turning your blood into an acid bath. If you have fewer hydrogen ions, the pH is less acidic and becomes more alkalotic or basic. The sweet spot for pH where we like to see it is between 7.35 to 7.45. Anything below 7.35, that's considered acidosis and your blood is basically screaming, help, I'm burning up here. In contrast, anything greater than 7.45, we're looking at alkalosis, where the blood just gets basic and starts throwing off your entire system. I want you to think confusion, lethargy, and that weird numbness like when your leg falls asleep during a Netflix binge, except your entire body saying, hey, something's seriously off down here. Next up, we have bicarbonate, also known as HCO3 negative, and that's our blood's version of Mr. Clean. It mops up any of that extra hydrogen ions to keep things chill. Now, what's cool here is that bicarbonate and pH have a direct relationship with one another. More bicarbonate means that your pH goes up and gets more basic. However, if you have less bicarbonate, your blood turns into an acidic mess and your pH drops. Ideally, you want bicarbonate somewhere hanging around 22 to 28 milliequivalents per liter. Anything less, and it's like you ran out of cleaning supplies mid-mess. Now let's talk about our gas kings, PaCO2 and PaO2. For these two gases, the P is going to stand for partial pressure, and the A is going to stand for arterial. Starting with PaCO2, we're going to measure the carbon dioxide pressure found inside your arterial blood. CO2 is like that annoying roommate that just refuses to do the dishes. Too much of it, meaning that it's going to be above 45, we're going to be looking at a very cranky and acidic mess inside of our blood. If we have too little of it, meaning that we're going to have less than 35, it's going to be like a ghost town inside of your bloodstream. And then there's PaO2, measuring the oxygen pressure found inside your arterial blood. I want you to think of this as the VIP guest everyone's been waiting for, especially your tissues. A normal range should be somewhere between 80 and 100, which means your blood is going to be well oxygenated and thriving. And finally, there's oxygen saturation, also known as SaO2. This is basically the blood's tinder match when it comes to oxygen. It's all about how many hemoglobin molecules we have cuffed up with O2. Ideally, you want at least 95% or more in committed, happy relationships. Anything less than that, and the cells are left swiping right on air and wondering where all the oxygen went. So now that we have a basic idea of the four key players, think about it. Your body is basically just an acid factory, cranking out hydrogen ions nonstop from regular metabolic processes like cellular oxidation and nutrient breakdown. Without a plan, your pH would be all over the place, like trying to balance a seesaw with an elephant on one end. Luckily, your body has a three-part defense squad keeping your pH in check. We have the cellular buffering systems. This is the body's first responders jumping in to neutralize acids before there's too much chaos. The lungs are air traffic control, exhaling away that extra carbon dioxide. And last but certainly not least, we have the kidneys. That is our cleanup crew quietly filtering out hydrogen ions. So first up, we have our first line of defense, which is the cellular buffering system, basically your body's pH bodyguard. In plain English, a buffer is like a protective pillow, softening the blow when pH tries to take a nosedive or skyrocket. Your physiological buffers are always on duty, responding within seconds to any pH changes. But who ultimately is the star player of our buffering system? It is our bicarbonate carbonic acid system, also known as the Taylor Swift of buffers. So here's the deal. It kicks off with carbon dioxide, that metabolic trash that your cells spit out into the blood. 
Once that carbon dioxide is inside of our bloodstream, it's going to dip into that water, also known as our H2O pool, and transform into carbonic acid. But the thing about carbonic acid is it's a little unstable, so it splits up fast, turning into bicarbonate and hydrogen ions. But here's the cool part. When it comes to buffer balance, this reaction can go both ways. When the pH starts climbing, meaning we have less hydrogen ions hanging around, we call that alkalosis. To fight back, your buffer system is gonna amp up the reaction. It's gonna start cranking out more hydrogen ions and bicarbonate, like it's trying to restock the shelves during a Black Friday sale. Now, when the pH takes a nosedive, meaning that we have too many hydrogen ions, we call that acidosis. To chill things out here, the reaction is going to hit the reverse. Bicarbonate is going to step up as the pH superhero, and it's going to team up with our hydrogen ions to create more carbonic acid. That carbonic acid is going to break down into carbon dioxide, which gets sent on the fast track to the lungs. Basically, the body's yelling, take a deep breath and let it go. I mean, really, it's a constant back and forth when you think about it, just to keep your pH from losing its cool. Next up, we get those good old lungs. And that's your body's second line of defense and its own version of a pH thermostat. The lungs keep tabs on the situation and adjust the breathing rate depending on what's going on to keep it balanced. So here's how it works. When acidosis kicks in, again, that means we have too many hydrogen ions in our blood, the brain's chemoreceptors are going to hit the panic button. They're going to sense that chaos and tell you to breathe much faster. The faster you breathe, the more carbon dioxide you're going to exhale, which helps calm things down by lowering those acidity levels. On the flip side, when you're in alkalosis, meaning you don't have enough hydrogen ions in your blood, those same chemoreceptors are going to step in and tell you to slow your roll. Your breathing rate's going to drop and CO2 is going to start to build up in the body. And with that extra acid, it's going to help bring things back to normal. So here's the thing. This system is quick on its feet. It's going to jump into action within minutes to handle that acid-based drama before it spirals out of control. And then we have our kidneys. That's our third and final line of defense and acid-based balance. And they're like the body's slow but meticulous accountants. While we have these cellular buffers as well as the lungs to handle quick fixes, the kidneys are in it for the long haul. They're working behind the scenes to balance those books and ensure everything adds up in the end. They don't just slap a band-aid on the problem, they rebuild the whole system if they have to. So here's the deal. In acidosis, the kidneys are going to go into overdrive, acting like bouncers in an exclusive club. They're going to boot out all of that excess hydrogen ions by excreting them through the urine. At the same time, they're going to hold on to bicarbonate, reabsorbing it back into the blood to neutralize the acidity. So what's the result? The blood becomes less acidic and the pH starts climbing back up to its sweet spot. However, in alkalosis, when the blood gets too basic, the kidneys kind of shift gears a little bit. They start kicking bicarbonate to the curb via the urine. Meanwhile, they slow down hydrogen excretion and even release a bit back into the blood, bringing the pH back down. You can think of it as it's trying to reintroduce just the right amount of chaos to restore balance. Unlike our lungs, the kidney system isn't fast. It's going to take hours or even days to fully kick in, but it's the most thorough. They're the measure twice, cut once squad of the pH regulation system, ensuring that the job gets done right and keeps the acid-base balance rock solid for the long term. So let's talk about interpreting ABGs. It might sound a little intimidating, but hold with me. We're going to give you the keys to crack the code. So let's break it down step by step. Step one is we want to start with the pH. A normal pH should be between 7.35 and 7.45. If we have anything less than 7.35, we're looking at acidosis. If we have anything more than 7.45, then we're looking at alkalosis. Step two is we want to look at the PaCO2 and the HCO3 negative. So once we figured out if we were acidotic or alkalotic based on the pH, it's now time for the blame game. Is it the lungs or is it the kidneys causing the problem? If the acid base imbalance is caused by the lungs, then the pH and the CO2 will move in opposite directions. If the pH goes up, the PaCO2 will go down. If the pH goes down, the CO2 will go up. It's kind of like a seesaw. When one rises, the other is going to fall. Now, if the imbalance is caused by our kidneys, then we're looking at a metabolic cause. And that means that the pH and the HCO3 negative is going to move in the same direction. So if the pH goes up, the bicarbonate is also going to go up. 
If the pH goes down, the HCO3 is also gonna go down. They're exactly like us. They're besties and they always stick together. You can use the ROM acronym to help you remember these relationships. RO stands for respiratory opposite, and that's the relationship between our pH and our PaCO2. And ME stands for metabolic equal, and that's the relationship between our pH and our HCO3 bicarbonate. Lastly, let's talk about what happens when our body tries to clean up the mess, also known as compensation. So let's take a look at our example. We have a pH of 7.32, a PaCO2 of 53, and an HCO3 negative of 30. First off, we know that the pH is low, which is screaming acidosis. Meanwhile, both our PaCO2 and our HCO3 negative are up and moving in the same direction. So you may be thinking, what exactly is going on here? The kidneys are trying to save the day by holding on to bicarbonate, hoping to neutralize that acid. Because that pH is still out of whack, we call this partial compensation. The kidneys are trying, but they just haven't nailed it yet. So the fact that our pH is still abnormal lets us know that we're only partially compensated. Now let's look at that same client and see if they get their act together and reach that full compensation. Their ABG might look like this. They have a pH of 7.35. That means that they're barely hanging on normal just by a thread. The PaCO2 is 50, so we're still a little acidic and our bicarbonate is 30, so we're still in that base range. So the pH is finally back to normal, but it's the kind of normal you achieve with pulling an all-nighter and drinking six cups of coffee. You're functioning, but are you really thriving? The PaCO2 and our bicarbonate, our HCO3 negative, are still elevated, so that underlying issue isn't fixed, but the body has managed to restore our pH. So there you have it compensation your body's way of saying i got this kind of it's messy it's imperfect sometimes it's downright ridiculous but it's all part of the game and there you have it that's everything you're going to need to know when it comes to understanding the overview of abgs as always if you have any questions make sure that you leave them down below i love answering your questions head over to nursechungstore.com there's a ton of additional resources to help you ace those abgs as well as you can grab this powerpoint and as always i'm going to catch you in the next video Bye.